Good evening from Washington. I'm Larry O'Connor. We've got a lot of developing stories here today in the world of intrigue between the deep state, Hunter Biden laptop, January 6 videos, Christopher Ray. There's only one man to talk about all these things. John Solomon, he's the proprietor of justthenews.com and a font of information on all these stories that your colleagues just don't seem very interested in over there in mainstream media, John. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yeah, uh, listen, they, they created the false narratives, so the unraveling of those false narratives are uncomfortable, so they just ignore them until the public crescendo gets too high. But they're starting to cover it. Listen, they're covering the IRS whistleblower. There's there's some breakthroughs. Yeah. They, 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 there's maybe, maybe by next year we'll have some of the stories from 2016 accurately in their media. Well, uh, footage from January 6th from Capitol Hill is now being released yeah. to you, John. You're one of the journalists uh, who's going to be able to scour through this. Uh, is yeah. that what we're about to witness, the unraveling of a major narrative? Yeah, listen, it's the same playbook over and over again in 2015, 2016, 2017, 18, 19. The Democrats, with their allies in the media, set one narrative, and they, and they did so to hide another narrative. Russia collusion was designed to get the Hillary Clinton email and Russia scandals on her watch off the radar so that people would focus on Donald Trump. It was a dirty trick made for distractions. In 2019, we impeached President Donald Trump by being told that the Hunter Biden story was hogwash. There was nothing to investigate. It was all appropriate. We now know that not to be true. In 2020, we were told the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation. It wasn't. In 2021 uh, and 2022, the January 6th committee said the uh, January 6th uh, wasn't a security failure. It was a political attack instigated by Donald Trump. Now we know that it was a massive security failure and that Democrats came to it with a political intention. And you're gonna see that political intention tonight. I'm gonna to release the first of what's gonna be weeks of video. We're gonna try every couple of days to give a new angle for people to absorb and learn from. Uh, you're gonna see Nancy Pelosi exiting from the Capitol that day with her security detail. And you're gonna see an odd thing in the security detail. Uh, her daughter, oftentimes getting in the way of the security uh, apparatus, trying to film it. Why does she have a camera? Why is she filming in this secret hallway used to evacuate the speaker? Why are, are the police uh, having to go around her stopping and pausing because she's still trying to capture video? Why did she bring a Capitol video at all to the January 6th protest? What was that about? Uh, when you see this, and I just interviewed the former Capitol Police Chief a few moments ago, Chief Sun, you're going to see the security concerns that the police had. They do not like the fact that the detail was forced to allow Alexandra Pelosi to come along and that she's filming all the way to Fort McNair, a very secret location in America. Uh, it's a security breach, according to the police chief on whose watch it happened. Um, this is the beginning of many other narratives we're going to unravel over the next several weeks related to January 6th. Looking forward to seeing that, and we'll certainly watch justthenews.com on a regular basis to see the latest. Uh, John, uh, we also had a revelation of sorts at a website called bidenlaptopmedia.com. Uh, yeah. Over 10,000 images from Hunter Biden's yeah. laptop. Yeah, uh, listen, uh, this will be another development. We've known the images are on there. I've gone through most of the images. I think from a news value, uh, there's not a whole lot about the corruption scheme in the images. The few that are, we've made public, like the times where you see business partners with the vice president or with Hunter Biden, those are public. Uh, these give you a window into the acknowledgedly twisted life as Hunter Biden admits his life was twisted, what sort of person he was, who he was hanging out with, the fact that he did drugs. I think we've known all this. They'll have uh -huh. some shock and political value. I think the more important images are things that we're going to make public in the next few weeks. Some new text messages that the FBI's had, they're not on the laptop, but they're going to describe what the Chinese motive was for approaching the Biden family. They're going to describe why Hunter Biden was really being paid by a Romanian oligarch who was in legal trouble. Uh, we're going to make those available. They're not on the laptop. They come from evidence that was turned over to the FBI by a witness. I think when people see those uh, images, which are really images of text messages, the content in them are going to go to the real issue of the Hunter Biden case and the Joe Biden case, which is public corruption. And I think uh, those are images I'm a little more excited about. What Garrett did is fine. Yeah. People might want to look at it. You're just going to get a reinforcement of what you thought about Hunter Biden. Um, but you just said the FBI has been in possession of a lot of these images and documents and emails and text messages that you're going to be releasing relating yeah. to Hunter Biden's business dealings. They are also in the possession of this document. It's an unclassified document that apparently yeah. details what a whistleblower told the FBI a couple of years ago, having yeah. to do with then Vice President Biden. We've discussed this, John. You uh, delved into this story there at JustTheNews.com. Uh, yeah. uh, 
then Vice President Biden having a financial relationship with a foreign national in exchange for a policy decision during the Obama presidency. Christopher Wray still refuses to give that document and hand it over to Congress. Congress has every right to see this, and it's not classified. Has Christopher Wray claimed that it is classified? No, no, he's not. He's just saying it's law enforcement sensitive and he doesn't want to give it up. Uh, there will be a contempt proceeding and he'll probably be forced to give it up when it's all over. He did make a concession yesterday, which I think is the warming of where this will end up. He did say they can come over and read it, just not keep it, and he'll redact it. They're going to say no redactions and turn it over to us. That's what a subpoena means. You should know what a subpoena means. You're the FBI <laughs> director. I think the Congress will probably win this one. Most of the people I talk to, they'll get it. They'll draw it out for a while. Why is this document so important? Obviously, it involves an allegation. But the real reason James Comer and Chuck Grassley are fighting for it is it's another Democratic allegation that the FBI did not thoroughly investigate. What did we learn from John Durham last week? Four different cases of Hillary Clinton potential corruption shut down in the 2016 campaign without being fully investigated. Now we know the laptop wasn't fully investigated right away. Now we know that, uh, the, uh, that there was an allegation in the summer of 2020 that Joe Biden might have been part of a bribery scheme. He was making policy changes in return for money to his family. This involves uh, Ukraine. I'm pretty sure it involves Burisma, based on my reporting. Uh, and uh, it doesn't get fully investigated. It gets shut down. And guess what the excuse was for shutting it down? I know you're going to be shocked when you hear it, Larry. What? Russian disinformation. Oh, my God. Oh, Have we heard okay. that script for seven years? A memo comes in saying, don't investigate it. It could be Russian disinformation. And the FBI willingly does it like it's done so many times, right? Um, Russia, Russia, Russia was a seven-year scam on the American people. And I yeah. think that's why James Comer and uh, Chuck Grassley are fighting for this. Another example, a Democrat getting de treated differently than a Republican. The IRS whistleblower, what does he say? Hunter Biden's tax case got treated differently than every other tax uh, defendant. Um, there's a pattern here. The FBI was protecting one party and torturing another. And that's what right. needs to get out to the American people. Well, and of course, because that's uh, you, you look at all of these things that the FBI did not investigate. And we did learn from Durham what they did investigate under President Trump. And that was all based on literally nothing. And the FBI knew it, John. Uh, just a minute left here. But there's uh, something else that we expect, sadly, certain agencies are going to be politicized. But the National Archive, uh, they're trying to duck a FOIA request over correspondence yeah. between Hunter Biden and his dad. At, what's the archive doing in the, the sad world of politics? Well, every here. president has some say over their documents. Every vice president has some say. And the, here's the important thing. These are communications between Hunter Biden to uh, Joe Biden's advisors when he's vice president. The archives is claiming an exemption that he was giving advice to the president or the vice president, now our president. Wait, we thought there was no relationship between the two, that their business and their politics were separate. I think they just admitted something very big. And by the way, probably likely a defense they're going to use for some executive privilege down the road. This is a very significant moment, a small little argument that has big implications for the Joe Biden investigation going forward. So let me just be clear, the only legitimate reason they have to uh, withhold this document on a FOIA request is if Hunter Biden was advising his dad, the vice president. And if that's the case, well, that opens up a huge can of worms because that is something they've denied the entire time. That's huge. All right. We'll keep watching. We'll keep following your great investigative work, John Solomon. But sadly, we're out of time on this segment. Thank you, as always. There's more to come on O'Connor tonight. You're watching the Salem News Channel.